Hello, this is Dr. Shirful Halim, and in today's talk, I will be discussing the organophosphate poisoning, which is very common in the primary healthcare setting in our country. So, those are the topics that I'll cover. I will talk about briefly about the uses, the classification, types of agent, and then I will talk about the metabolism and the mode of absorption of those agents, followed by a brief mechanism, the clinical features that you see, and how to manage those patients. So first, let's talk about the basic types. I mean, um, the government agents are the military users, the NARB agents, which are SAB, SARIN, TABUN, and VX agents. But those are less common. Commonly, we see the pesticides, which are actually derivative of the phosphoric acid, and you can buy them over the counter. And we can also classify them based on the toxicity, and the highest toxicity is seen in agents like parathion, and the common ones, the diazidons and the malathion are actually low toxicity. So the exposure can be um, accidental, which is very common. It can also be suicidal at home. But more commonly, we see the occupational exposure in the farm workers. And there can also be diarrhea exposure if we eat the vegetables which are sprayed with these kind of pesticides. And those pesticides and those agents can be absorbed through almost any road. And they have very high rates of absorption. As I said, they're highly lipid soluble and they absorb, they're absorbed very rapidly and they can cross the blood-brain barrier and can cause CNS symptoms. And they're metabolized in the liver. Their mechanism of action involves inactivation of the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. So this is the enzyme responsible for breaking down the acetylcholine which is a neurotransmitter. So if you inactivate this enzyme, the acetylcholine will not be um, degraded, so they will start to build up, and acetylcholine buildup will lead to parasympathetic activation. So um, if you see the clinical features, they will develop within 30 minutes uh, to three hours after exposure. The patient will have a typical garlic smell. And the classic symptoms are the muscular symptoms known as dumbbells. So dumbbell stands for diarrhea, urination, myosis, bradycardia, bronchospasm, emesis, lacrimation, and uh, passes of stool, which is taxation and salivation. But there can also be nicotinic features such as cramps and paralysis. And the patient can also have sinus features such as convulsion, respiratory depression, and cervical collapse along with coma. Sometimes, some patients develop some chronic um, neurological features such as intermediate syndrome and organophosphate induced delayed polyneuropathy. And WHO has a severe classification based on the level of um, acetylcholinesterase activity in the serum and also the RBC. So, for diagnosis, we take the history of exposure, which is commonly a farmer coming with the typical dumbbells, and we uh, provide or in, uh, inject the patient with atropine. And patient has uh, immediate improvement. And that's how we diagnose in the ED. But uh, if you want, you can also do a cholinesterase estimation, but this is a very, um, uh, this is a test that is rare uh, in our city. So the treatment steps include uh, initial decontamination followed by resuscitation. And then we give the patient atropine and the specific drug is pralidoxine, which reverses the activity of the organophosphate. And you also correct the metabolic abnormalities and uh, manage the complications. So uh, for atropine treatment, our target endpoints are heart rate of 80 beats per minute, a blood pressure systolic of more than 80, dilation of pupil, and a clear chest. So we start with three to five amples of atropine, and then we um, give the same dose or double the dose every five minutes until we see or until we reach those target endpoints. And the maintenance include 20% of initial dose. But sometimes we can overdose the patient with atropine and the patient will develop agitation, hyperthermia, urinary retention, or severe tachycardia. And another treatment that I said, the specific treatment is by oxides. So the common oxide that's used is pralidoxan, which reacts to the organophosphate and leaves the acetylcholinesterase enzyme intact. And the typical dose uh, is around one grams, which is given over 20 to 30 minutes.